Creating dados and dashboards is so easy that anyone can do it. To start, simply select Create from the main menu. You get two options. You can start from an empty dashboard, or you can use any existing dashboard as a starting template. Let's start with an empty dashboard. This is our dashboard designer. On the left hand side we have a collection of dashboard elements and the design surface is in the center. We can set the number of rows and columns in the design grid using the sliders at the top. Notice that the design grid is quite coarse. This is a key point because we guarantee that each of our dashboard elements will be able to render something meaningful even in a single square. Have a look at what happens as I resize this element. It doesn't simply scale up, it completely rearranges its content to perfectly use the available space. At any point I can run a preview of my dashboard. So let's build a full dashboard layout. I'll add the Time Navigator control. I can customize it by setting the visualization type, time drill down levels, or selection presets. Then I'll add another navigator, the scorecard grid. In a small amount of real estate it renders as a drop down, but when I give it more real estate it renders as a full grid. I'll configure it by setting tree data structure and enabling icons. Next, I'll quickly configure the ranges on my radial gauge control. Then I'll add a couple of bullet graphs. Finally, I'll add a comparison time chart. I can adjust the layout at any time if I wish to give more real estate to some controls. Let's also set the style for our dashboard. This is an easy task because Dadas and Designer ships with a collection of professionally designed styles. I can simply pick the color that matches my branding and choose the optional background texture. Let's see a preview of our dashboard. Now I'll go back and name my dashboard. and then save it locally. When I go back to the home screen, my new dashboard will be there. And it is fully integrated with the navigation structure of the app. To create a phone layout, I will open this dashboard again in the designer. I will select the phone layout in the drop-down at the top. This view gives me my phone design surface along with a collection of dashboard elements on the left. Notice that these are the existing elements that I'm already using in the master layout. They are already configured, all I need to do is arrange them in a way that works well on the smaller phone screen. Next I'll run a preview of my phone layout. The dashboard is fully functional. The phone layout will be saved within the same dashboard definition. You notice that our dashboard runs even though we haven't provided any data. This is because the designer automatically generates simulated data. Let's take a look. This is our data view. Our control instances are on the left and data tables in the center. Each control has a set of data properties that point to one or more columns in the data tables. For example, the value of our radial gauge will be the sum of the column named metric1. As we drop visualizations and navigators to the design surface, the simulated data structure is automatically adjusted to match the data requirements of the dashboard we are designing. For example, this fairly complex dashboard features daytime slicing because of the time navigator and data filtering through the scorecard grid. Therefore, our simulated data contains the daytime field as well as the filter field along with the required data for all the metrics. We also have a separate table used to populate the structure of the scorecard grid. Simulated data is convenient because it shows the type of data structure we need to provide to our dashboard. We can write SQL or MDX queries to produce the desired structures or simply export the simulated data to Excel. and fill in our own values.
Let's build a full dashboard based on Excel data. We'll create the Sales vs Targets dashboard we've seen in the previous video. We need a Time Navigator, a Radial Gauge, and a Time Comparison Chart. I'll go to the Data View and Add Data. I'll select the Local Excel option and browse for my Excel document. Datazen offers the list of worksheets. I'll select Monthly Targets and Daily Sales. Next, we'll configure data properties. Time Navigator values will come from the Daily Sales table. Radial Gauge Main value will also come from the Daily Sales table, while the Comparison value will be drawn from the Monthly Targets. Similarly, main series of our Time Comparison chart will be drawn from Daily Sales, while the comparison series will come from monthly targets. And we're done! Our new dashboard functions based on the Excel dataset we provided. I'll name this dashboard and save it locally. Finally, Let's build a dashboard based on SQL Server data and publish it to a group of users in our organization. This time I'll go straight to the data view and select to add data from a server data source. I can browse all data sources and queries that have been configured on my Datazen server through its web-based control panel. When I add a server dataset, Datazen stores a connection to the live data source which enables seamless data updates. The rest of the dashboard design experience is the same as with local data. Let's take a look at this data set. We have countries, regions, sectors, as well as amount and previous amount metrics. We'll make a dashboard that filters by sector, displays the total for the selected sector, and visualizes the geographic distribution on a map. I'll add the selection list for filtering, number with delta for the total and the gradient map as the main visualization. We will need the map of world countries. Next, I'll configure data properties. Both keys and labels for the selection list will point to the sector field. This will populate the selection list with unique values from that column. Selection list will filter the main tables by the same field. The total will be based on the amount field and we will compare it to the previous amount field. Map keys will be drawn from the countries field and the visualization will be based on the value of the amount field. We're done! Let's publish our dashboard. I'll give it a name and select the Publish option from the main menu. Step 1 requires us to save our dashboard locally. Step 2 allows us to configure server settings. I will keep the default title, Dashboard Hub and Dashboard Group. Our dashboard is now live. When I go back to the main screen, I will see the local copy as well as the published version in the appropriate server group. In just a few minutes, we were able to build an effective dashboard based on live SQL Server data and publish it to a group of users. This is what Datazen was designed for. Thank you for sticking around until the end of the video. If you like Datazen, you can support us by posting a review in the Windows Store. We are always working on improving the product, so all of your feedback is welcome.